The fashion industry has the power and influence to reshape the world. Well, at least what the world wears. You would think an industry with so much power would be completely transparent. Sadly, things aren't always what they seem in the world of fashion. Just wait until you see the truth about why you wear a certain size in one brand and a different size in another. Stay tuned to find out. If you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. Today, we're discussing 10 things fashion designers don't want you to know. You'll never keep up. When Tyra Banks tells the girls on America's Next Top Model that in the fashion industry one day you're in and the next day you're out, it's because it's true. We mean this literally. You might be surprised to learn that fashion trends work the same way. When you think you have finally nailed a trendy style, it turns out the next week something else is making headlines. This is because the fashion industry has now introduced 52 micro seasons. In the past, we only had two fashion seasons, spring slash summer and fall slash winter. That just isn't the case these days. Retail stores need new merchandise each week, and they look to designers to come up with them. That means the system is set up to work against you, and you'll never keep up. The fact is, they don't want you to. This is an industry that thrives on you spending money, and if they keep you wanting more, you'll spend more. Think about that the next time you're at Forever 21 or H&M. They may be playing on your psychological need to stay trendy. The good news is, you're now on to them, and won't fall for this sneaky little trick anymore. Designer Gifting there's a little secret the fashion industry doesn't seem to want to talk about, and that is the secret of designer gifting. It is a well-known fact that working in the fashion industry means you'll get some pretty cool freebies. That is how magazine editors can afford all those expensive clothes they talk about in their magazines. The reason this happens is because it's like free advertising for the designer labels. Though people have known about this form of gifting for a while, there is another one no one's addressing. Have you ever noticed some of your favorite fashion bloggers or magazine editors seem to fly all all over the world? Where do they get the dough to do this? While some make excellent salaries, others are flown out by fashion labels. These trips come with the expectation that the blogger or the editor will cover the brand for their publications. There are times these people reveal their stories and trips are sponsored, therefore making these types of posts paid for content. But the majority of the time, this isn't the case. We don't think it would be a weird trade, we just wonder why editors and bloggers aren't straight with us. Young Models Fashion models are getting younger and younger. There's a good reason for this. Well, at least the designers think so. Not only do young models have the bodies designers want to dress, but they will also work for cheap. Younger girls are more likely to be okay with living in tight quarters while chasing a dream. These girls are even so desperate that they'll work for free. Sadly, the fashion industry takes advantage of these poor girls, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop. The other problem with using young models is that designers are making clothing that's only accessible to younger shoppers. Consider Considering the baby boomers are the generation with the most disposable income, you'd think designer labels would consider their needs. Many older trendsetters complain that the fashion industry doesn't cater to older women. They don't even think they make clothes for middle-aged women either. Does anyone else see an issue with this? We all age and we all want to do it gracefully. People are living longer than ever and it's time for labels that pay attention to this. We're sorry, but we don't want to wear the same bingo attire our grandparents wore. We want an ageless fashion revolution that caters to women of every age. Spec work for designers. It takes some serious hard work to become a successful designer. Just because you have the degree and the talent doesn't always mean you'll get the job. Even the most elite senior designers won't get hired because there's a scam sweeping the fashion industry. This scam is making potential hires work for free before you hire them, or spec work. In many cases, labels expect new hires to create nearly a whole new line for them before they're hired. One company asked a woman to design six dresses, five blouses, five jackets, and five skirts before they would hire her. This doesn't sound too bad, but the usual two-week window was reduced to one week. In other industries, there would be compensation for this work. That just isn't the case in fashion. This is deterring many of the world's most elite designers to move away from this career path altogether. What is so frustrating is the fact that they already have portfolios and resumes that should speak for themselves. There's so much competition for designers to make it big that these labels aren't being checked. This is sad because we aren't sure how much the industry will suffer due to this unfair trend. Chemicals and clothing. 
Just because a tag shows you all the materials that your clothes are made of doesn't mean you know everything that's in your clothes. Did you know that manufacturers use chemicals in every step of making your clothing? Considering there are dozens of measures taken in making a simple cotton shirt, this statistic is alarming. Garment makers use chemicals in many different ways. Some of them are to make the items insect resistant or assist them to have a long shelf life. Yes, just like canned food needs to make it from the manufacturing facility to the store, so do fashion items. Other chemicals help clothing achieve their unique designs like dye, printing, or pieces of metal. What's even more shocking is the fact that many manufacturers use several restricted substances. When American Apparel was still in business, they used 250 controlled substances in the production of their garments. The reason we call these materials restricted is because they're so harmful that governments legally regulate them in parts of the world. You know those stonewashed jeans you like? The workers making them are exposed to cotton and silica dust, which are both linked to lung disease. Even if these chemicals aren't affecting you, that doesn't mean they aren't harming someone else. Faulty Design have you ever had a shirt you've worn two times and it completely fell apart? Or maybe you threw it in the wash and it shrunk almost instantly and now it's unwearable? No, you aren't going crazy. This is exactly what the shirt was designed to do. Back in the day, people expected their clothes to last more than one season. Because of this, labels made more quality products. We know this because vintage pieces have been able to withstand the decades without damage. Sadly, this isn't the case for modern attire. Considering we now rotate our fashion every week, many designers simply can't keep up. This means the clothes they are producing aren't finished and are more likely to fall apart. There's some good news in all the chaos. Clothes are now more affordable than they used to be. As consumers, we have no one to blame but ourselves for this trend. We can't expect cheap clothes to be well made. Somehow, our expectations have lowered, causing the standards of manufacturers to go down with them. Even if you splurge on an expensive item, you probably don't expect it to last more than a couple of seasons, right? Have you noticed this trend? Feeding equals child labor. Brace yourselves, people. If you have beads or sequins on your clothing, it may be an indicator of child labor. Considering how popular it is to add a little glitz to your ensemble, this is an alarming notion. Many times, clothing manufacturers target young children to do beadwork because of their small hands. The size of their hands makes it easier to produce intricate details and patterns. The most disturbing part is that these children are expected to work 16 hours a day in horrible working conditions. Kids as young as 8 or 9 are working in filthy sweatshops using tiny needles to make these sparkly garments for mass consumption. Many manufacturers have stopped child labor and replaced children's sewers with machines. Unfortunately, that isn't the case worldwide. Stores that are under the fast fashion umbrella usually don't regulate the source of their clothing. Because of that, these manufacturers aren't held accountable for the conditions of their workers. Many of them don't want to pay the expense of purchasing ethically sustainable machinery, so they rely on child laborers. Think about this the next time you choose to buy anything with embellishments. Do your research to make sure your clothing is ethically sourced and you can help stop this growing epidemic. Pointy Toe Shoes this type of footwear is in every fashionista's closet. Pointy toe shoes are considered a fashion staple, and we don't see them going anywhere. Sadly, that doesn't mean they're good for you or your feet. Yes, you've probably grown accustomed to the pain these types of shoes cause, but they can still wreak havoc on your foot health. Much like other high heels, ones with pointy toes can cause metatarsalgia. This is a painful condition that causes the balls of your feet to become inflamed. If you're a fan of sky-high heels, then you've probably already experienced this. That isn't the only condition that can affect your feet. There is also neuroma. Many people who wear pointy toe shoes have experienced a painful sensation between their third and fourth toes after wearing the shoes. This is what doctors call neuroma or Morton's neuroma. You can make your feet feel better by switching to flats, but sometimes surgery is needed to relieve the pain. Even though these shoes are unhealthy for your body, the fashion industry is still pumping them out in vast numbers. You know what they say, pain equals beauty, and that is certainly the case with pointy toe shoes. Vanity sizing. Have you ever worn a certain size with one brand and an entirely different size with another? No, you aren't fluctuating in weight. This is called vanity sizing. Because the size of American shoppers has gone up over the past few years, the clothing sizing chart has as well. Back in 1958, a size 12 was the same size as someone who wears a size 6 today. This can also be confusing because a size 6 can fluctuate from brand to brand as much as a few inches. Trying on jeans is even worse. You can go into a store, grab a few jeans of the same size and 
brand, and they will all fit differently. This is partially the consumer's fault because they're more likely to buy an item that has a lower size number. Did you know that around 70% of women in the US wear a size 14 or greater? Most brands don't even carry those sizes, which leads to another issue of size discrimination. Women are expected to be a certain size, yet fashion labels are never clear about what their actual size really is. This is a problem that celebrities like Beyonce and Melissa McCarthy are starting to speak out against. Hopefully they're listening and we can see the end of vanity sizing as well as size discrimination. The Real Cost there's a reason we're all able to get cheap clothing, and it's usually at the expense of other nations' workers. Yes, it's great that our demand for clothing helps employ these workers, but most of the time, they're overworked and underpaid. The fashion industry now accounts for 80% of Bangladesh's foreign trade. Researchers believe this trade boom might lift the nation out of poverty. The problem is that for every $20 you spend on an item, about $1 goes to the person that made it. Another issue comes with the cost of living in Bangladesh compared to what these workers make. In general, these garment makers have a monthly salary of around $630, but their living expenses average $1,400 a month. Does anyone else see a problem with this? To remedy this issue, many American brands have started moving production facilities to the US. If you run into an American label that seems to be more expensive than you're used to, there's a good reason. They're usually paying their workers higher wages, which leads to higher production costs. So you may pay $150 for a shirt from an American made designer label, but they'll actually profit less than $20. Check out our friends at The Things who make interesting, feel-good videos about lifestyle, pop culture, and everything viral that is sure to keep you entertained. Did any of these fashion designer secrets shock you? We want to know what you have to say in the comment section below. For more fashion videos, check out red carpet outfits you can wear every day. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe to The Taco.